Hi, everyone. Welcome to our 21 shares analyst call. We're very grateful to have you here. We're going to let you guys get yourself comfortable. But most importantly, we have our very own researchers from the 21 shares research team, Carlos and Tom. Guys, how are you doing? We're doing great. We're doing great, Ellie. Very excited to show our findings here. What about you, Tom? Okay. Super excited. Glad to be here. And thanks for having us. Oh, I'm long time to see, right? I think on the last analyst call, you were not yeah. around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been quite a minute. Right, right exactly. I love to be here, uh, on this show. It's really nice. It's really nice to share really cool research to everyone. Absolutely. Very exciting. All right, it's getting crowded. This is great. Thank you, everyone, for joining our analyst call. Today, we're going to present you guys the most important or arguably one of the most important upgrades that Ethereum has ever encountered and been able to pull off the Shanghai upgrade. And we're very excited to really talk about what it means for the investors, what it means for the industry, and most importantly, what are the prospects once we are going to see the unlock of the Shanghai upgrade, especially for the Ethereum investors and the Ethereum community. This is a very exciting day. We have a few hours left until the, the protocol changes forever. So we're very excited about that. All right. We're getting a few more people in and then we can get started. Good. All right. So let's get started, actually. Let's not waste anyone's time, especially because time is precious, as you guys know. So as you guys know or may know, we are going to experience one of the most important upgrades for Ethereum after the merge. The merge happened in September 2022. The Shanghai upgrade is actually going to happen very soon in the next, I believe, 10 hours. We actually have a dashboard and a countdown so that you can see the last seconds and minutes of when it's going to happen exactly. So stay tuned for that. We're going to also show you our amazing dashboards. So first, for many investors who are not aware, basically blockchain technology is using multiple mechanisms to verify transactions and secure the network. And some of them are using proof of work, like supercomputers, and others are using staking. And staking is very important because it's more planet friendly. Instead of using supercomputers and consuming a certain amount of energy, whether it's fossil fuel or renewable assets, staking provides a way for investors to secure the network and verify the transactions with capital. And the capital is not denominated in euro or dollars or Swiss francs is denominated in the crypto assets that the network is using. For Ethereum, this is Ether. So since December 2020, it's possible for the investors to basically verify the transactions and then get rewarded as a yield and as a reward, right, to basically provide capital to the network. However, uh, since December 2020, these assets have been locked for quite some time. And the Shanghai upgrade is basically a liquidity event for the investors to finally get the Ethereum back. But in order to preserve the network security, the Ethereum developers and the rules of the network made sure that they don't want to have full exits from the network. And that's why we're excited to talk about our Ethereum withdrawal simulator that we published last week so that we can show you guys the different scenarios that we were able to create that are close to reality in order to understand how much time investors should wait to get their fan back. So we're going to start with our very own Carlos. Carlos, tell us why the Shanghai upgrade is one of the most important upgrades for the investors. Now everyone knows here that this is a liquidity event, very similar to essentially an IPO, right? Where now people can unlock the funds and trade in the open market, if of course they choose to, it doesn't mean that they're going to, of course, withdraw their assets, but tell us more about this. Yeah. So as you mentioned, the Shanghai upgrade is a liquidity event and essentially is an incremental improvement from the merge, which was Ethereum's transition to a proof of stake consensus mechanism. So essentially the TLDR is that Shanghai will close the loop on staking liquidity by allowing users to withdraw their staked ETH or stake ETH without an undefined lockup period. And that is the main takeaway here. The Shanghai Aubrey has many features, but the main thing is that users will finally be able 
to withdraw their state ether. And why is this important? It's very important because, as you mentioned, Ellie, since December 2020, validators have locked their ETH to validate the network, but they haven't been able to gain access to their balance. So the fact that we are seeing liquidity close down in one moment in time means that there are potentially flows that will happen in the market and that an Ether that will become readily available for potentially selling and investors can be worried about that. But that also means that other investors that were more risk averse and that were fearful of that undefined lock-up period will now stake more Ether because they were previously not uh, risk averse enough to do it. What that means is that we may potentially see over the long term an increase in the amount of stake Ether. So that means an increase in the amount of people that are validating the network and securing the Ethereum network, which is positive for the Ethereum blockchain. No, absolutely. No, I couldn't agree more. And you really hit the nail on the head here when it comes to the security, right? Because today there is billions of dollars allocated to secure the network. However, in order to ensure network security, again, because this is denominated and measured in the capital allocated into the network and not in the amount of calculations and superpower that there is any ASIC machines that Bitcoin is using, what is important here is that there is a limit for each settlement time on the FM network. So the settlement time on the FM network is about 12 seconds. Every 12 seconds, when the Shanghai upgrade is going to happen, there will be a limitations of 16, so one six, 16 withdrawals at every settlement time. So when, for example, there is a block of transactions, it means that within that block of transaction, there is only 16 withdrawals that can happen. And these are usually partial withdrawals. So they're not like full withdrawals. To go back to how investors can be eligible to be validators on the FM network, either they are basically full validators and they have to have at least 32 Ether to basically allocate into the network, or they just delegate right their Ether to the FM network and they can have less than 32 Ether, right? And essentially a full withdrawal is when a validator, there is a full validator, basically withdraws 32 Ether back to their own wallet. What is important here is that for the full withdrawals, there is a limit at every time a validator is selected, there is a limit of eight. Right, So there is a limit of 16 withdrawals totally for each settlement time. And then there is a limit of eight full withdrawals every time a validator is connected to the network and selected. And the selection time is about every six minutes or so. So these are the things that here at the audience you guys need to really understand because that would basically impact the waiting time when the investors can get their firm back. However, compared to the transactions, the typical transaction that I can have between Tom and Carlos, here these transactions are not incurring any transaction costs. So they're not incurring any gas fees, as we call it in the Ethereum community, which means that basically these transactions are essentially a redemption back to someone's wallet. And it's not like a peer to peer transaction. And because it's not a peer to peer transaction per se, there is no transaction cost. All right. So these are the things that you need to remember. 16 withdrawals at every settlement time, so every 12 seconds. Eight full withdrawals as a limitation. And then most importantly, now, many of you as a limitations for the withdrawals. And we know that there is billions of dollars allocated in the network. There is more than 500,000 validators now on the Ethereum network as well. And we're going to be more precise with our dashboard, don't worry. What is important here, Carlos, tell us how can we estimate when the investors can get their fan back. Perfect, Ellie. That was a great introduction. So basically, we created an Ethereum withdrawal simulator uh, to estimate how much time it will take for investors to get their state ETH back. Uh, so as Ellie mentioned, there are two variables we need to consider. The first variable is the number of missed blocks per day. So as Ellie mentioned, every 12 seconds, there is a settlement time. But for some reasons, validators may not be connected to the network and they may miss a block, which means they did not include that settlement of transactions to the network. So we need to take into account the best neutral and worst case scenario for the amount of missed blocks in a day to estimate withdrawals accurately. The other variable that we need to consider is the full validator withdrawals or exits from the network. 
to estimate that, we also take into account three scenarios, the best, the neutral, and the worst case. And to do that, we essentially randomized the results of the withdrawals, but we also took into account some factors that we already know for a fact. For example, we know that Kraken in the U.S. received a Wells notice for the staking services for American investors. So we know that potentially Kraken will withdraw a huge portion of their stake ETH withdrawals. We also know that Celsius, for example, which is a bankrupt crypto lender, will withdraw the entirety of their stake ETH. So there are some variables that we already know for a fact that will withdraw. So with this in mind, we estimate that partial withdrawals will take between five to six days to process, while full withdrawals, meaning validators withdrawing their entire balance and stop securing the network, will take between 20 days and 123 days or four months. It's important to note that these results refer to the amount of time it will take to process accumulated withdrawals. So it could be that when you withdraw, you are the first in line. So you receive your stake ether in a very short time. But what we mean here by 20 to 123 days is the accumulated time it will take to process all withdrawals with a principle of first come first serve. And also we should reiterate that this analysis is based on our own conservative assumptions and that investors are free to run their own assumptions. Because as we mentioned in the beginning, it could be that the queue will be a lot shorter, or it could be that in some extreme cases, the queue will be longer, for example. And also one thing that I would like to reiterate once again is that in my opinion, we should expect an increase in the amount of Ethereum that is staked on the network over the next few weeks and months as the Shanghai is at the risking event for investors that were previously fear fearful of an undefined lockup period. No, absolutely. And then most importantly, I think Carlos, you can also show the slides of the different validators on the network as well, because this is very important here that there are a different set of validators in the network. As you can see here, go to the other one as well. I think the other one is a little bit better. Yeah, this one here, you can see all the validators and their market share in the number of basically Ether that they have allocated from their service. So Lido, Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, et cetera. And that's very important here because based on the amount of withdrawal requests, we're going to see basically a wider waiting time if there is more requests than we were expecting, right? And that's why we had our best neutral and worst case scenario. Essentially, uh, as a first come first serve, it means that the first person today that requests a withdrawal, we get their FM back within 12 seconds, right? Because this is the settlement time it gets to basically settle transactions on the FM network. However, the person that is last in the queue, and of course, depending on the amount that is requested and the number of validators requesting withdrawals, it could take, of course, uh, four months as a worst case scenario. But don't worry, because this is, of course, a theoretical approach when it comes to this analysis here. But however, to give you a real time information and so that you can assess the waiting time for the validators, our very own Tom, alongside another researcher that is not on the call today, Kareem, did an amazing job to build a real time dashboard. And the real time dashboard is very important here so that you can see how long it's going to take to actually get to the upgrade. So Tom, this is your show. Tell us what's going on. What's going on behind the scenes? So thanks, Ellie, and thanks, Carlos. It's an amazing simulator. And thanks to that, we can reference the actual number as well, so as to make our own assumption, right? So currently, it's really exciting because it is eight hours down before we have the Shanghai upgrade. So what it means is that 18 million Ethereum will be finally freeing up for all the validators. It's not necessarily all the validators will withdraw, but then all the Ethereum will be available for everyone to withdraw after the Shanghai upgrade. As Carlos has mentioned, it has been around 2.5 years after the Beacon Chain staking contract has been introduced. So after the two years, it has accumulated over 18 million Ethereum on the staking contract. So the current staking ratio is around 15%. However, Compared to other proof of stake network like Cardano, Solana, this staking ratio is still comparatively low. And therefore, as Carlos mentioned as well, it could be potentially, since it is a liquidity event, it will 
the risk, the liquidity risk for a lot of investors, potentially the sticking ratio could go higher in the future because the risk for the investors are lower. So they don't need to lock up that long period of time in the future. And in this two graph, we can see the sticking ratio over time and the amount of ETH being staked on the Beacon Chain network. And below, we can also see every month how much ETH is being staked. So interestingly, we have separated into different phases. So the first phase is first when the Beacon Chain proof of staking contract launched. So it's still in proof of stake environment. And then the launch of the whole staking environment, but it's still in proof of work environment. And then we have the post merge, which is after the merge switching from proof of work to proof of stake. However, the staking activities didn't see a huge uptake after the merge. And then the next phase we're going to have is the Shanghai upgrade. And afterwards, after the Shanghai upgrade, we will definitely see another color here indicating the staking activities and the staking statistics after the Shanghai upgrade. And right now you can't see any full withdrawals here since the Shanghai upgrade hasn't launched yet. But afterwards, you will definitely see the gray bar chart below indicating a full withdrawal. And then we also have a breakdown in terms of the staking entities. So currently the largest fellow data on the network is Lido, which comprises of 31% of the market share. So Lido for a quick context is a liquid staking protocol. So as Ellie mentioned as well, there are like two main types of staking. The first one is just staking it on the beacon chain. And another type is through a sticking provider and especially for the liquid sticking protocols it will give you a derivative token so that you can still exchange the derivative token as a representation of your stick on the network and why is it called liquid sticking is because you can still trade the liquid stick token on the open market like on decentralized exchange so that if you in need of quick liquidity you can swap it for ethereum or for usdc to gain access to immediate liquidity. So that's what Lido provides a lot of stickers. So that's why Lido has been a really popular protocol. And a lot of stickers actually opt to use Lido instead of just sticking directly, since you still gain the liquidity option of using the stick Ethereum token. And afterwards, you can see the breakdown in terms of the market dominance of different entities here and the type of entities as well. So currently, as mentioned, liquid staking is definitely one of the most popular options, and therefore it comprises of around 36% of market dominance. And the next one is centralized exchange, because obviously it is the most accessible for a lot of retail investors and institutional investors as well. So it provides a lot of staking services to different stickers that investors are interested in. And lastly, we have uh, a chart to show the daily or weekly you can select yourself. We offer the option for you to explore different statistics on your own. So you can see the different entities in different time frame, the sticking activities over time. And the withdrawals, as mentioned, this Shanghai upgrade hasn't appeared yet. And therefore, we don't have the data on hand, but we will soon have the data, which is super exciting. And Tom, can you tell us more about, can you scroll down a little bit more, the last one on the left hand side, can you zoom in as well? There is an uptick in the staking as well. You can see here what happened exactly. Tell the audience what happened in February and why we've seen an uptick in basically the staked assets. I think it's important for the investors to understand that has been actually increasingly more ether staked into the network, right? So first of the reason is definitely because of the anticipation of the Shanghai upgrade, okay. but it, in, in the meantime, when we look at the real-time on-chain data, we can see who is depositing, right? And interestingly, a lot of the sticked Ethereum through Lido is from a founder from Tron, which is called Justin Sun. So he deposited a lot of the Ethereum through Lido, which is around exactly the 300k here. So he deposited a huge chunk of Ethereum to Lido to earn staking rewards. However, bear in mind that he is the founder of another layer one blockchain, which is called Tron, which is heavily involved in the China region. A lot of the Chinese users use Tron, this blockchain. However, it has shown that he's still really involved in the Ethereum ecosystem. He's still really interested in Ethereum as an investment. And therefore he staked a lot of his 
Ethereum through Lido to earn seeking reward. Yeah, absolutely. So there is a lot to unpack with this dashboard. The thing to remember is that in this dashboard, what you can see is the behaviors of all the staking providers and the staking services on the network. And most importantly, you can also see the countdown to get to the Shanghai upgrade, right? So there is about eight hours left, as you can see here at the top. And that's very important, eight hours and 38 minutes left. And most importantly as well, what you need to remember is the amount of ether that are staked on the network. However, we can actually see in real time as well, and that's really the sherry on top, and that's one of the dashboards mm -hmm. that I love the most too. The sherry on top is that you can see the request to withdraw the assets. So we can see in real time how much time the investors are going to wait, actually potentially wait to get their ether back. Um, so here, as you can see on the left hand side, and Tom can zoom in as well for the validators exited, there is about 3,000 validators that actually asks the Ethereum network to get the Ethereum back, right? For multiple purposes. Some of them have actually deposited more than 32 Ether. And that means that they want to have the additional Ether that they deposited back to their wallet. But also others would have to basically maybe pay taxes or get the ether back into a cold storage solution, right? Because of course, we've seen that some exchanges may be affected as well with the staking as a service, for example, in the United States. We've seen as well that some uh, platforms are considered as distressed assets like Celsius. So we know that, for example, Celsius, a lending platform that went bankrupt last year, is going to withdraw most of their assets actually everything once the Shanghai upgrade is going to be upgraded, right? So these are the things that we should expect. And it's possible that we see also more withdrawals from Kraken because Kraken got also into regulatory trouble with their staking as a service product in the United States. So it's possible that we see more withdrawals, but here for the investors, and of course, after this call, you're going to have all the necessary links to see in real time the data. What you need to remember here is that and Carlos can really give more insights into it. Carlos, can you tell us more how much time with 30,000 exits, and these are full exits, how much time these investors are going to wait to get their ether back? With around 30,000 exits, it should take about 20 days for the network uh, or three weeks for investors to get their full ether back. So basically also it means that the first entity or the first person that asked to withdraw are going to get their ether back within 12 seconds before basically the remaining ones as you can see here and tom can zoom in for the charts that he's showing when you zoom in there we've seen an uptick in the basically the withdrawals request the reason why we've seen an uptick in the withdrawals request is because there is more people that finally believe that the shanghai bread is going to be a reality and as it become a reality, then there are requests for getting their the ether back for multiple purposes. It doesn't mean though, right? It doesn't mean that these ether are going to be sold onto the open market. That's very important to note as well, that this is not always the case. And it doesn't mean that this is a downward pressure for the investors, right guys? Yeah, exactly. Right. And I will also add that a lot of the validators that are exiting right now, it may be potentially that there are solo stakers or home stakers, so regular people like you and me, which are validated in the network, and they now want to stake for simplicity with a liquid staking provider, such as, for example, Lido, which Tom mentioned. And because when these people started validating the network, these liquid solutions were not available yet. So it's quite possible that we see a big number of solo stakers or home stakers withdraw their assets to validate with a liquid staking solution instead. Absolutely. So essentially now we're seeing that there is a withdrawal request for 3,000 validators. Assuming that these validators have 32 Ether, essentially it means that there is about 116,000 Ether that are requested to basically be withdrawn to the network. And then most importantly, what does it mean in dollar terms? In dollar terms, it means that this is about $22 million in Ether, I believe, that would be potentially withdrawn. Actually, $221 million that are asked to withdraw onto the network. So to summarize, uh, and Tom can really scroll on the left side of the screen, 
for the validators exit, the 3,000 validators exit is basically an equivalent of $121 million in Ether that may be withdrawn, right? But again, it doesn't mean that this is a selling pressure in the open market. But the good thing with our search and real-time data, it means that you as an investor or as a seasoned person in the industry, we can see in real time what it means for the whole network. Exactly. Absolutely. So we're almost at time, actually. It's been a very efficient way to look at the Schengen upgrade. Tom, Carlos, do you guys have any closing thoughts when it comes to the Schengen upgrade? And what are you guys expecting going forward? For sure. I think that the Shanghai upgrade finally is like the final step to the transition to proof of stake. In September of last year, we saw Ethereum transition to proof of stake, but it was like an incomplete transition, if you want to look at it that way, because investors were still not able to withdraw their lock ETH. So now it's like the complete transition to proof of stake, in my opinion, with this liquidity event. And it's very exciting because what I believe and what I have said throughout this session, which I think it's the main takeaway for me, is that this is a de-risking event for Ethereum staking and that we should see an increase over the long term or over the medium to long term in the amount of validators that are securing the Ethereum network. And that is very positive for the security of the Ethereum blockchain and for the health of the network as a whole. Tom, what about you? <laughs> Carlos summarized pretty much everything I want to say, but I would just share several key metrics that would keep an eye on after the Shanghai upgrade. First of all is the withdrawal rate. I would be interested in seeing when is the first full withdrawal happen. Secondly is the dominance of the liquid sticking protocol. How will it change over time? So my anticipation would be liquid sticking protocol dominance will increase over time. And the potentially sex, which is centralized exchange dominance, would decrease because of Kraken, obviously, will be forced out from the U.S. market. And in the meantime, also some distrust over decentralized providers as well, because you have seen the fallout of FTX. So I think probably it will be changing dynamics as well and more dominant of the liquid sticking protocols, no matter Lido or Rocket Pool, but I believe it will shift there. Couldn't be more. I think it's also an opportunity for institutional grade products like exchange traded products to really come to the rise in these type of environments to really provide a format that investors are used to when it comes to investing in stocks and fixed income. But in this case, it's going to be into staking underlying products. Um, and I think these are the exciting part for companies like us at 21 Shares because essentially there is an opportunity for a cold storage solution to invest in staking products. And this is a liquid way to have access as well to basically the underlying assets, especially here for Ethereum and of course, over staking products and protocols. So these are the things that I think I'm going to be closely looking into. And of course, we're not biased, but these are the things that I think we could see as well as dominance from the institutional grade products like, like 21 shares that can come and rise in the rank going forward. And that's a high probability and very exciting as well, which makes a lot of sense, especially for the last checks and the type of investors that do not want to invest in staking services or in centralized exchanges for multiple reasons, especially for the mandates. So this is really exciting as well. And I think most importantly, as the assets and the network stabilizes, we're going to see, I think, also less wait and see type of behaviors that maybe we could see now as well, because there is about more than 3000 validators that want to get their ether back. It doesn't mean that this is just for them as solo validators. It could also be a staking service as well, like Lido or Coinbase or Kraken or Celsius or any other providers, as you saw in the ranking that may be asking to get their ether back for the clients or the type of users that have access to these services. But this is really exciting. We have an article about the whole waiting time simulation called the Ethereum Withdrawal Simulator. And of course, after this call, you're going to have most importantly the links for this. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, there is a chat here. Feel free to drop your questions. And I think we have a question here from a person in the audience. Hi, is the Shanghai upgrade also expected to reduce the gas fees? 
Very interesting question. Thank you so much. This is important because it's true that when we think about the Shanghai upgrade, people think that, okay, like people are going to withdraw and it's going to incur more network demand and increase the transaction cost. But here, as we said previously, essentially the Ethereum withdrawals are not peer-to-peer transactions. These are network or contract to person's transactions, right? So basically it's like you as a person or as an investor, you basically request the network to get your Ether back. And this is not as if you were asking Carlos or Tom to send Ether to your wallet. So it's not going to incur any transaction cost. And this is really the most important aspect of it. And that's why we've seen more withdrawals than expected. But most importantly, given the fact that we are in a market where the demand has, of course, decreased significantly compared to the last bull market, and that we are seeing more demand and innovation on scaling solutions built on top of Ethereum, like Arbitrum, Optimism, and some of these protocols are coming to the rank, the transaction cost on Ethereum is actually cheaper than historical levels, given the fact that we are basically in a more, I would say, calm market. Some people could say that we're in a bear market, but there's some exciting developments when we look at the fundamentals, like the developer traction, the number of new protocols, the developers leaving big tech and uh, big banks to work in crypto and over areas that we're looking into more closely at 21 shares research that of course we can provide you some evidence here no to respond to your question the gas cost is not going to be part of the variable that basically will uh, prevent people from withdrawing do we have any other questions i believe we don't have any other questions by the way if you guys have any feedback on the things that you would love to see more in our analyst calls and webinars, feel free to respond to the survey as well after this call. We have an exciting up and coming webinar that we cannot disclose the topic about, but stay tuned. If you're not signed up to our newsletter, every quarter we're going to send to our privileged newsletter list, a quarterly reading list so that they can see everything that we published over the quarter. And we have a lot of reports. We get covered on the media a lot as well. So stay tuned for that because we published the last one yesterday. Actually, that was the first one. The last one was yesterday. And we're excited about that as well. We have a lot of over initiatives. We have conferences where we attend with our sales team. So really feel free to sign up for our newsletter to really stay in the know and most importantly, helping you stay ahead of the curve as well. If you have any other questions, feel free to really reach out to us directly on uh, via email or Twitter as well. We're very active on social media and LinkedIn too. But thank you so much for your time. Carlos, Tom, it's been a blast. Thank you so much as always. Great work. And, uh, and for the audience as well, I hope you enjoy the session and uh, feel free to, to leave your feedback as well. All right. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.